Over 17 years ago, the U.S. Navy launched the first of these high-tech vessels designed for nearshore operations. The Littoral Combat Ship, or LCS, is not just a warship. It symbolizes speed, agility, and readiness. Designed to tackle modern coastal threats like missile-firing boats, small submarines, and mines. Join us to explore what makes the LCS a game-changer for naval warfare. Stay tuned to find out if these small combatants are as powerful as they claim. The Littoral Combat Ship is a unique class of small surface combatants specially equipped to handle global challenges in coastal regions. These ships are designed to enhance joint force access in these littoral zones. They can operate on their own or within high-threat environments as part of a larger, networked battle force that includes bigger, multi-mission surface combatants. From the start, the LCS program has been surrounded by controversy, facing delays, cost overruns, and sharp criticism from the national security community. Few ships in recent history have faced as much scrutiny as the LCS. Many argue that it's the wrong ship for the wrong time. Some critics compare the LCS to a guided missile frigate and find it lacking, while others believe the Navy would benefit more from fast attack crafts or small corvettes equipped with anti-ship missiles. Some think a single mission vessel, purpose-built for mine warfare, would be better. These alternatives could appeal if the Navy's future fleet needed such ships. However, the U.S. Navy truly needs a different kind of warship, an affordable, self-deployable, and reconfigurable multi-role vessel designed for operations in contested littoral zones, the birth of an idea. In 2003, the Navy introduced its first experimental LCS, the Sea Fighter, which was designated as FSF-1 or Fast SEF frame. With the Oliver Hazard Perry-class mine hunters and Avenger-class mine countermeasure ships nearing the end of their service lives, the U.S. Navy issued the LCS requirement. This led to design proposals from Lockheed Martin and General Dynamics. Two designs were chosen for the LCS program, one from Lockheed Martin featuring a mono-hole design and another from General Dynamics later acquired by Austal USA featuring a trimaran hull design. These designs offer different methods for meeting the Navy's speed, flexibility, and modularity demands. Ultimately, both designs were funded as variants of the class. Secretary of the Navy Gordon R. England announced that the first LCS would be named USS Freedom. LCS-1 was commissioned on November 8, 2008 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, followed by LCS-2, commissioned on January 6, 2010 in Mobile, Alabama. One of the main criticisms of littoral combat ships is their limited firepower. The Independence class's aluminum hull also raises concerns about the ship's durability. To address these issues, the Navy has continually upgraded the original design to support a broader range of weapon systems. The Navy is constantly working to improve the LCS's capabilities. Recently, they have been testing a new combat system. This system is meant to prepare the LCS for various military missions through upcoming live fire exercises. These tests will help enhance the ship's readiness for significant maritime warfare by improving the integration and efficiency of onboard systems. This effort includes adding new government-supplied equipment to enhance fire control, targeting, and integration across different weapon systems on the ship. Sounds like a good use of resources, right? For instance, the ship-launched close-in weapon system uses a phalanx gun to fire 4,500 small projectiles per minute, creating a dense defense barrier. Additionally, CIWs can be equipped with larger, longer-range rolling airframe missiles. Unlike the 20mm cannon used in CIWS to eliminate nearby threats, the C-RAM fires RAM from an 11 missile battery. These RAMs are fire and forget missiles that use radio frequency detection and heat-seeking infrared sensors to track and destroy incoming threats. How exciting! In 2019, the Navy installed the Naval Strike Missile on the USS Gabriel Giffords, based in San Diego. The NSM weighs just over 880 pounds and has a range exceeding 115 miles. While the NSM boasts a more excellent range than the Harpoon anti-ship missile, LCSs lack the long-range fire control systems to identify targets at such distances. The future of littoral combat ships may include the standard Missile 6.
On September 18th, 2023, the Independence Class LCS Savannah departed San Diego with some unusual cargo, a 40 feet gray container and a trailer mounted radar connected to the ship's superstructure by long neon orange cables. The US Pacific Fleet later confirmed a successful test launch of SM-6 supersonic missiles in the Eastern Pacific, demonstrating how this lightly armed class could one day play a role in traditional naval battles. Naval surface forces indicated that this test is part of ongoing experiments to determine if a mobile launch system could be effective on ships like the LCS. Even with these advancements, the Navy still needs to address the high costs associated with the LCS class, which affects its ability to fulfill its original mission goals. However, with advanced weapon systems, extensive combat capabilities, and the latest hull design and propulsion technology, the LCS is well prepared for various missions in coastal waters or the open sea. A modern naval vessel's core weapons are essential for defense and offense. One key weapon is the 57mm Mark 110 gun system, which can fire automatic salvos at a rate of up to 220 rounds per minute. This gun mount delivers high rates of fire with pinpoint accuracy, making it effective against surface, airborne, and shore-based threats. The Freedom Variant's RIM-116 rolling airframe missile significantly enhances the ship's self-defense capabilities. They are designed as a high-firepower, low-cost defense against anti-ship cruise missiles and other asymmetric threats. Meanwhile, the Independence variant features the CRAM system. Recently, the CRAM has also been installed on the latest Freedom Class LCS. Additionally, the LCS is equipped with the Nixie decoy system. Beyond the ship's built-in weapon systems, the Surface Warfare package includes 30 mm gun systems, 11-meter rigid hull inflatable boats, a surface-to-surface -surface missile module, an MH-60R helicopter equipped with Hellfire missiles, and the Fire Scout Vertical Takeoff Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. This Surface Warfare mission module is designed to tackle small boats and is considered the best swarm killer in the surface fleet. The Mine Countermeasure module is designed for mine sweeping, remote detection, bypassing, and mine hunting, which involves detecting and neutralizing mines. This module uses acoustic and magnetic signatures rather than contact or mechanical methods to influence mine hunting. It includes the Airborne Laser Mine Detection System, Airborne Mine Neutralization System, Remote Mine Hunting System, Unmanned Influence Sweep System, and Knife Fish Unmanned Underwater Vehicle. Talk about enhancing the Navy's mine countermeasure capabilities in coastal environments. Littoral combat ships were initially designed to hunt and eliminate submarines using sonar devices helicopters, and torpedoes. However, these systems needed to work together more seamlessly. The towed sonar couldn't function properly in the ship's wake, and the Freedom-class ships were found to be too noisy for effective submarine hunting. Consequently, the Navy decided to cancel this feature in 2022. The Navy has tried to retire many littoral combat ships well before reaching their intended service life. Although designed to last 25 years, these ships are being decommissioned after less than a decade. According to the Congressional Budget Office, the cost of each vessel was about $500 million, with some exceeding $600 million when mission packages are included. Mark Montgomery, a retired Navy Rear Admiral and senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy's think tank, indicated confidence in retiring ships that had become maintenance burdens. Those decommissioned are the USS Freedom, USS Independence, USS Coronado, USS Milwaukee, USS Detroit, USS Sioux City, and others. The Navy plans to retire more LCS warships, citing issues such as ineffective anti-submarine warfare systems, inability to fulfill mission requirements, frequent mechanical failures, and structural problems in high-stress areas. The future of the LCS remains uncertain, and only time will tell if these ships will eventually be deemed obsolete. What are your thoughts on the LCS and its role in future naval operations? Is it a suitable investment for the US Navy's fleet? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video informative, please like and subscribe for more insightful content on military technology and defense strategies. Until next time, thank you for watching.